So where we left off, we added the background to the screen. Now we can add our guide to the screen. I'm going to use the same hero that I used in the last sprite kit tutorial, which I have right here, hero 2 and hero. And hero is going to be 60 by 60, and the low res is going to be uh, half that size, 30 by 30. So hero will be the high res, hero 2 will be the low res. So we'll go into the image assets and we will right click here, new image set, and we'll call this guy Jeff. And we can add him to this. So the retina display one is 2x, and the low res one is 1x. And you can see that works out well. And that means that we can reference Jeff in the code by just writing Jeff. So then we go back to our game scene, and we have add BG. So that will add the background onto the screen. So we'll create a similar uh, function that will add Jeff onto the screen. Let's call this function add Jeff. And the order here does matter because if you add the background and then Jeff, Jeff is going to be on top of the background and that's what we want. If we added Jeff and then the background, the background would be on Jeff. You wouldn't see Jeff and you would be confused. So we'll create a function called add Jeff. And in add Jeff, we will create uh, Jeff and that will be equal to a new SK sprite node and we'll use the image named Jeff and this is referencing the image assets so then we can um, add different things to Jeff but the most important thing is that we add Jeff to the screen so we can say to the screen add child and that node will be Jeff so that would add Jeff onto the screen and Jeff is going to appear in the middle of the screen because of where our anchor point is. So now we have Jeff on the screen, but we don't have any touch interaction with Jeff. And it would be nice if we coded this properly so that, you know, Jeff is a little bit extendable. So we'll leave Jeff over here for right now. What we'll do is we'll create a new class just to kind of house all of Jeff's properties. And we'll do this for Jeff and we'll do this for the bad guys as well. So we'll call this hero.swift. So we'll create a new hero.swift. And in hero.swift, we can kind of hold on to all of Jeff's properties. Now we don't need a lot for Jeff, but it's good to just kind of loosely couple him from the code so you don't just have one gigantic thing. So the first thing we'll do is we'll hold Jeff's sprite node. So we'll say SK sprite node. Now notice it's not code completing for that because we need to import um, sprite kit. And notice we're also getting an error because now we need to create an initializer for that, which is not initialized. So we can say that's going to be an SK sprite node. We're also going to need to keep a hold of Jeff's particles, but we won't. Um, that's the sprite kit emitter, which, but we won't do that right now. Let's just create a speed here. It's going to be equal to 0 0.1. Now, because we're setting this as a decimal, decimals will default to doubles instead of floats. You say self.guy is equal to guy. So now we have some information about Jeff. So now we can go back to our game scene. And where we added Jeff, we can also save some information about Jeff. So we can create a new hero, var hero. And here we can say hero is equal to a new hero. And the guy, which is we're holding the SK sprite node so that we can reference that later. It's going to be equal to Jeff, which is only a local variable. So now what we need to do is we need to see what happens when they touch the screen. When they touch the screen, we want to move Jeff. But we're going to do it without using the update, which is the equivalent of like what happens on every single frame. We're going to do this just using touch began. So on touch began, for each touch, we want to get um, the location of the touch. So up here, we'll say var. This will be stuff that's global. A CG float, because anything having to do with positioning things in Sprite Kit is going to be a CG float. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to make sure that we don't do anything when the game is actually over. So we need to keep track of that too. So we'll say var uh, game over is going to be equal to false because the game is currently not over. So we'll say if the game is not currently over, if not game over then we can get the uh, touch location because we don't want to move Jeff otherwise. 
and we want to uh, grab the touch location for Jeff and we're going to do a little bit of math here. Because 0, 0 is in the center of the screen, if you want to move Jeff up, you have to move him in negative y. If you want to move Jeff down, you need to move him positive y. So in order to know how far to move Jeff, we have to know the size of the screen, how high it is, and you can get that by doing self.size.height. To get half of that height, we're going to do divided by 2. So now we have the size of the screen. Now we need to move Jeff in accordance with that. So what we want to do is we want to get the location of the touch. And since we're looping through a bunch of touches, which we will be if we put this in the right place, there we go. For this individual touch, we can say touch dot location in view. And the view is the self dot view. So we want to know where they touched within this individual view on the screen. So we can get the y position of that and we can multiply that times negative one. When you multiply something times negative one, it's going to um, make it the opposite of what it was. So if it was positive, it'll make it negative. If it was negative, it'll make it positive. Now, if we do have an actual touch, we can say that we're gonna move them using this move action. So we'll do an SK action and what this does is it does all of the moving for you over time. So we can say move to Y, and the Y position we want to move it to is the touch location that we got earlier. And the duration is how fast you're going to move him. So we're going to move him in half of a second, 0 0.5. And we don't want him to move like in a linear jarring fashion. We want him to move a little bit smoothly. So for that move action, you can say that the timing um, mode is going to be equal to SK action timing mode dot ease out. So that'll make him kind of smoothly move. And then what we'll do is we'll apply that action to our hero. So we can say hero and that'll give us the class dot guy which will give us the reference to the node itself dot run action and this will allow us to run the action. And what we'll do is we'll run the move action. And if we wanted to do something after he moved, we have this trailing closure here. But we're not going to do anything right now. So that should make the guy move. So let's test this out. So wherever I touch on the screen, he kind of does a nice smooth move in to that place motion. And the reason we needed to do the negative one is because if we tap this and we just tried to go to where he is, um, then we would get this him moving in the opposite direction. By multiplying it times negative one, we get him moving in the correct direction. So it's nice to see him move so smoothly. Boop, 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 boop. And you can't move him past the end of the screen because your finger doesn't go past the end of the screen. So that's moving the guy. 